coastal zone developments related to tourism and the cruise and yachting industries continues to destroy some of the most complex ecosystems around the island. This has affected mangroves, forests, seagrasses, and coral reefs, all of which lay the foundation for marine biodiversity. I think that what we've got to make sure is um, we do a better job in communicating to um, all stakeholders in terms of where you want the waste to be emitted. But um, more and more boats are coming with holding tanks. Um, a lot of marinas, well, marinas do have the capacity to help in terms of the management of waste, but um, too many yachts still do not possess holding tanks. Removal of mangroves to allow for hotels and tourism construction in areas that are key habitat for biodiversity have transformed ecosystems and reduced marine wildlife population in St. Lucia. Cleared in some areas as well for charcoal production, mangroves are a first natural line of defense against increasing storm surges due to climate change. They are nature's perfect armory to absorb the energy of waves as they rush to the land. The presence of mangroves cause reduction of sediment loads reaching into rivers and near shore waters. Tourism development is not the only settlement related contributor to sedimentation, pollution and the overall reduction of the quality of habitat for marine biodiversity. Untreated domestic wastewater in some areas runs freely into the sea. As mentioned before, biohazards like pesticides and fertilizers used on farms also run off into streams, eventually reaching coastal reefs. Pig farming near riverbanks has added high loads of fecal matter, nitrogen and phosphorus in streams. Animal waste also absorbs the oxygen in the water, suffocating fish and other marine life, driving them away or killing them. A reef health index for the corals along the western shores of St. Lucia scored 2.8 out of a possible 5 points. This index considered coral cover, algae presence, and the abundance of fish. Only 30% of the reefs were deemed to be in good condition. However, 25% were considered to be in fair condition and 35% in poor condition. Reefs occupy nearly 90 square kilometers around St. Lucia and are mainly small patch reefs and near shore narrow fringing reefs. When it comes to their survival, high siltation and sediment loads as well as biohazards from poor land use practices are considered greater threats than climate change and warming oceans. In 2015, marine management of the western reefs was reported to be helping fish stocks rebound. Given the current pressure for beachfront property to satisfy tourism development, however, a trend of marine habitat destruction is expected to continue around the island. Climate change adds to these negative trends. Seagrasses and coral reefs are projected to smother and die off as oceans warm, effectively reducing potential fish nursery habitats over the next 10 to 50 years. Climate change impacts on coastal marine biodiversity include coral bleaching, disease and death from rising ocean temperatures, reduction of growth in corals and other calcifying animals due to ocean acidification, destruction of corals and coastlines due to higher intensity and frequency of storm surges, and a reduction of light in seagrass beds and coral reefs due to rising sea levels. Overall, it is projected that with better management of the impacts and vision for coastal zones over the coming decade and new developments in managing coastal zone marine ecosystems, coral reefs in fair condition around St. Lucia might be recoverable. However, those in poor conditions may be non-existent within the next 15 years unless key functions are restored. As these drivers of marine habitat destruction extend over the next 10 years, harvesting seafoods by the fisherful community also remains difficult to manage. The amount, the size, and um, even sometimes you go out and the average you used to get like five, eight years ago is not like um, now. 
We used to get fish um, like um, 100 pounds, 200 pounds. Now the fish, uh, which is the same type, you get it like 50, 40 pounds. Fish is not the only marine species projected to decline in the coming years. Sea urchins are currently unsustainably harvested with little to no protection policies in place. Sea turtles are also on the decline. Nearly all species of sea turtles are classified as endangered. A number of species including hawksbill, green, leatherbacks and loggerheads visit St. Lucian shores to nest over months annually. In an effort to prevent the overhunting of sea turtles, Officials have put in place open and closed seasons on hunting the animal. Yet, some still hunt sea turtles during off-season. The eggs are also collected. Sometimes, they are dug up and eaten by feral dogs and pigs. Also to um, the destruction of the habitat. So I mentioned the pollution of the marine environment. Um, a lot of our sea turtles are highly migratory being that they traverse as far as Australia and we would find some in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So during that movement, at certain times of their lives, they would encounter different activities um, within the oceans that mm -hmm. would um, impact on their lives. So things like consuming plastics. Mm -hmm. Sea turtles consume a lot of um, jellyfish. So they most times would mistake jellyfish, plastic bags for jellyfishes. So then that too impacts on on their survival and the littering is part of their in, within their habitats. Public awareness of the plight of the sea turtles is particularly important since law enforcement of national conservation legislation is inadequate. Within the past decade, though it still happens, there has been an overall decline in the poaching of sea turtles in St. Lucia. However, habitat loss due to higher wave energy leading to beach erosion due to climate change and construction of hotels and accompanying structures on local beaches is now considered sea turtles' greatest threat. Because of these factors, sea turtles may become a rare sight in St. Lucia within the next 20 years. Like hunting of sea turtles and marine habitat loss, unsustainable fishing practices have led to declines in a variety of fish species. Since the 1980s, species such as dolphin fish and tuna were heavily fished, while declines were observed in other species such as wahoo and flying fish. Snapper, conch and shark landings remained relatively steady during the 35-year period. Proposed expansion of marine managed areas with no-take zones may help improve fish stock over time in St. Lucia. However, due to lack of enforcement at many of these protected areas and the need to earn a livelihood by fisher folks, it would be more accurate to forecast a decline in the local fishing sector. With continued absence of fish stock assessments and perpetual poor fishing practices, the fate of artisanal fishing in St. Lucia could be similar to that of nesting sea turtles in the next 20 years. That is, it could be a rare sight. There are plans and revision of plans for conserving biodiversity in St. Lucia. But will sufficient action be taken in time to avoid the worst possible scenarios of the future? The current absence of sufficient action at the scale of the entire island on biodiversity conservation is an indicator that St. Lucia is not keeping up with changes in the land and sea that are rendering them inadequate to support life. Usually, the animals disappear as plant variety decline. After this, unless a community has the economic, political and or military means to extract resources from alternative means, those who cannot afford the basics of a comfortable life seek to migrate. This leads to a scenario where St. Lucians become refugees due to environmental and social collapse. This can happen in less than 50 years with current trends. It brings us to the aggregate effects of climate change, land degradation and loss of biodiversity on the island.